New research by Professor Rajendra Gupta from the University of Ottawa suggests that our universe could potentially be much older than previously believed. This finding is based on a study that provides a plausible solution to a long-standing problem in cosmology, which arises from the observation of certain galaxies that appear to be significantly older and more advanced than was previously thought possible. The age of the universe has been estimated using two main methods, calculation of the time since the Big Bang and studying the oldest stars based on their red shift, which occurs as light from objects moving away from us is stretched during its journey through space. The commonly accepted model, known as the Landis EDM Concordance, has estimated the age of the universe to be approximately 13.8 billion years. However, discrepancies emerge when certain stars appear to be older than the universe itself, according to redshift measurements. These discrepancies were further heightened when the James Webb Telescope discovered six galaxies that appeared to be much more mature and advanced than their expected age. These galaxies, which existed only about 300 million years after the Big Bang, exhibited characteristics typically found in much older galaxies, challenging previous conceptions of galactic evolution. This led to the consideration of alternative theories, such as Fritz Wicke's theory of tired light, which proposes that red shift may not be solely indicative of distance, but could also be influenced by light losing energy during its journey through the universe. If these findings are confirmed, they would necessitate a significant reassessment of our understanding of the early universe, including the distance and age of galaxies and stars, as well as the overall expansion of the universe. As a result, the scientific community may need to revisit and potentially revise many long-held theories and conclusions regarding the cosmos. Gupta's research has raised fundamental questions about our understanding of the early universe. He suggests that the fundamental rules governing particle interactions, known as coupling constants, may have evolved over time. This could mean that the behavior of light and matter in the early universe was vastly different from what we observe today, challenging our ability to identify the oldest objects in the cosmos and comprehend the universe's formation. Moreover, Gupta challenges traditional cosmological constants, proposing the existence of evolving coupling constants that could explain the unusual characteristics of early galaxies. By reconsidering these constants, his calculations indicate that the universe may be significantly older than previously believed, potentially around 26.7 billion years old rather than 13.8 billion years. This revised age may provide explanations for perplexing astronomical discoveries, such as the advanced galaxies detected by the James Webb Telescope. Speaking of the telescope, its unprecedented capabilities have revealed a multitude of ancient and atypical galaxies, including those that existed a mere 200 million years after the hypothetical Big Bang. These findings challenge existing notions of early cosmic evolution and invite a re-evaluation of our understanding of the universe's history. According to the standard model of cosmology, the previous Big Bang doctrine predicted the existence of single stars or basic structures of galaxy formation in the early universe, not fully developed galaxies that appear billions of years old. However, data from observations, including the James Webb Telescope's deep field image, revealed ancient galaxies emitting far more energy than anticipated. This discovery posed a perplexing question. How could these ancient galaxies emit such extraordinary amounts of energy into space, especially within 1 to 5% of the universe's current age? Scientists proposed two possible explanations, intense energy sources such as black holes or massive stars, and changing constants in early space as suggested by Gupta's hypothesis. Additionally, the James Webb Telescope's detection of the Sears 1749 Galaxy Candidate challenges classical physics, fueling the rise of quantum physicists who are making groundbreaking claims about the universe. This unexpected discovery forces scientists to reevaluate their understanding of the universe's origins and its early evolution. The mission of the James Webb Telescope was to unveil the oldest galaxies and stars in the universe, but its findings have challenged established beliefs about the universe's age and early development James prompting Webb a re-examination have sent shockwaves through the scientific community, challenging long-held beliefs about the universe's early development. Rather than confirming existing predictions, the telescope's images displayed unprecedented findings, including galaxies older than any previously observed. 
specifically the discovery of Sears 1749, an exceptionally ancient galaxy, defies conventional models of cosmic evolution. This galaxy, with a red shift of Zemwan, suggests an age of approximately 13.5 billion years, seemingly contradicting the known timeline of the universe's formation. Furthermore, the detection of Methuselah, a star apparently older than the universe itself, further complicates previously established cosmological principles. Dr. Rohan Naidu, an astronomer, anticipated and actively sought out the oldest galaxies in the telescope's data, leading to the identification of numerous ancient galaxies with unprecedented redshift values. This proliferation of ancient galaxies challenges the traditional understanding of the universe's origins, indicating potential flaws in existing cosmological calculations. The James Webb Telescope's advanced technology enables detailed study of ancient light spectra, providing insights into the size, mass, density, luminosity, star count, and elemental composition of ancient cosmic objects. These groundbreaking discoveries are prompting a reevaluation of established cosmological theories. Because a galaxy's light is its calling card, so to speak, light is an information carrier which possibly carries over ages unadulterated information about objects through the universe. Only thanks to this circumstance can we collect such exact data about objects that are far away from us. So, James Webb has also studied the metal composition of the oldest galaxies and again found something that could bring down the old rules of physics. Very young stars and thus galaxies were supposedly rich in light metals like hydrogen and helium, but Webb's results did not confirm this assumption. The measurements showed that these early galaxies were already rich in heavy metals. Does this also invalidate the theory of population three stars? Population three stars were supposedly something like the prototypes of stars and therefore must have been almost free of complex metals. In cosmology, practically all elements are called metals. Even hydrogen and helium are metals in astrophysics. As the first stars of the universe, Population three stars must have formed from the materials that were present immediately after the Big Bang. Therefore, they are thought to have consisted mainly of hydrogen, helium, and traces of lithium. Since these are the primordial elements formed during the Big Bang's nucleosynthesis, heavier elements such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and iron were first produced by these early stars and released into the interstellar medium by supernova explosions. Population three stars are thought to have been very massive, possibly hundreds to thousands of times more massive than the sun, making them extremely bright but also short-lived. Their short lifetimes and massive nature would lead them to end up in spectacular supernova explosions that release the first heavy elements into the universe. These metals would then provide the raw material for the next generation of population two stars. But where are these stars? At a time when scientists hoped to find exactly these population three and two stars, they now discovered entire galaxies containing light and heavy metals. If these first stars existed, they must be even older. Currently, an exciting question is whether Webb is theoretically capable of discovering these stars. The telescope's range was given at about 13.5 billion years. It would not have had to look much further if there was only darkness in the universe for eons before the existence of the first stars. So no light can come from there that we can observe. But now we know that something is wrong with the previous cosmological view of this world. And of course, researchers would be happy if Webb could look a little further back. Only time will tell if the telescope can do that. It's certain even Hubble discovered incredible things when it was already considered obsolete. Schrodinger's galaxy, the entrance to the multiverse, Let's go back to Schrodinger's candidate. Galaxy candidate is the name of the galaxy because it's not yet clarified to 100% certainty whether the light really comes from a galaxy. Now you're probably wondering, why do researchers want to know about the many stars contained in this assumed galaxy? The answer is quite simple. James Webb cannot count the individual stars. It measures only the light. Then researchers ask, how many stars would it correspond to? There is a second theory light. that these objects could also be supermassive black holes. But this assumption is almost crazier than the assumption of galaxies because black holes of this size could not have existed at that time, according to the Big Bang Theory. 
That Sears 1749 and many other dark red light spots are galaxies has now been confirmed with high probability by a consortium of the best Earth-based telescopes. Currently, all of Webb's unusual and shocking discoveries are being investigated by worldwide teams of scientists working independently of each other. This is where Sears 1749 really shone, for it was during this review that the impossible measurement results occurred. Using photometry, the red shift of Sears 1749 was determined to be 17, but now the galaxy has three putative neighbors. Measurements of these neighbors came to Z5, which is just 12.5 billion years. The distance from Sears 1749 to these neighbors is not large enough to explain the threefold difference in redshift. This galaxy appears to be in two places and at two times at the same time, and this, of course, is where the quantum theorists got wise. Simultaneously at two places and in two times that corresponds exactly to the behavior of light quanta, the smallest particles from which matter is built. With this discovery, Sears 1749 was called the Schrodinger Galaxy, and this refers to a famous thought experiment according to which a cat is dead and alive at the same time. If the suspicion is confirmed that Sears 1749 does not follow the regularities of our universe so far, there could be an interesting explanation. Sears 1749 is possibly at the threshold of the multiverse or already belongs to another universe. So far, however, most astrophysicists still resist this possibility and look for other explanations. If Sears 1749 is a member of the Z5 cluster, there must have been a calculation error. Cosmologists would have a considerable problem if galaxies with red shifts of 5 could be taken for something much older or if galaxies which come in measurements on values over Z10 in truth are much younger. What now corresponds to the truth remains written in the stars. The question remains whether we interpret the truth of the stars correctly. James Webb is currently busy with other projects, but there will surely be another deep field image that shows us the universe as it really looked 13.5 billion years ago, and possibly more. Will India show us the moon in a completely new way in August 2023? The Chandrayaan-3 mission has landed, and scientists are expecting completely new findings. What exactly will the rover Pragyan and lander Vikram study on the moon? And why did India land its rovers at the lunar south pole of all places? Join us on this mission and witness a nation conquer the moon. India's successful mission lands on the moon. India is the fourth nation to successfully land a probe on the moon. With the Chandrayaan missions, India is making national and international space history. Indians have been outsiders in the space business. But this is about to change. Chandrayaan-1 and Minus-2 were successful missions. The first launch of the Chandrayaan-3 mission was bad luck. The lander and a small rover slammed into the lunar surface, and years of work were lost. India did not hesitate, however, and built an almost identical new dual probe and sent it into space from the Satish Dhawan Space Center on July 14, 2023. On August 5th, Chandrayaan-3 reached into lunar orbit. Less than three weeks later, the lander touched down near the lunar south pole at 18.3 Indian local time on August 23rd. This makes India the first nation to position a lunar rover at the strategically important south pole. Provide us with unique impressions of a region that no lander has explored before. Chandrayaan-3 consists of the lander Vikram and the rover Pagan. India rejoices. Chandrayaan-3 has landed in India. Millions celebrated the success when Vikram landed. This video was captured by Vikram's camera as Pagan rolls onto the lunar surface. Their descent and the rover's debut were fully automated, control from Earth is possible, but the delay of the signals is close to 3 seconds. It takes 1.3 seconds to send a command from Earth to the moon and another 1.3 seconds to receive a response. In an emergency, this may be too long, so the lander and rover have been pre-programmed to perform their landing operation independently with the help of their onboard computers and sensors. Vikram and Pagan are able to rely on their own artificial intelligence and capabilities at all times during their mission on the moon. The video of the landing is a testament to how well and safely the two lunar probes perform. Other space agencies such as NASA expressed their enthusiasm on and the congratulated their feet, and India pulled it off with flying color. 
In other videos, the Pragian rover can be seen happily cruising around on the lunar surface. It is controlled by its navigation camera and powered by its power module. Both probes landed near a small crater moving at a speed of one centimeter per second. Pagan will now begin its research work at the moon's south pole. Shortly after the successful landing, the rovers had to be put into a dormant mode. In early September 2023, they slumbered for almost two weeks because there was no light at the south pole during the lunar night. On September 22, 2023, the sun rose again at the south pole and the two were supposed to begin their work again. But Vikram and Pagan did not react to the wake-up call. At first, there was shock in India, and dozens of experts set out to troubleshoot the problem and continue India's big dream of lunar exploration. What has Chandrayaan-3 achieved so far? India conquering space was the dream of one man, Vikram Saravai, considered the father of India's space program. The visionary scientist founded the Indian Space Agency in 1969 and was the initiator of major space projects in India. Throughout his life, Vikram was considered a universal genius in India and a pioneer in fields of nuclear physics, cosmic rays, meteorology, education, industry, and social development. Let's look at another video. These images were taken by the Pragian rover with its navigation camera. The video shows the Pragian rover moving on the moon with its six wheels powered by solar energy. The rover is the main instrument of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. It was designed to explore the lunar south pole and perform various experiments and measurements there. Pagan can move up to 500 meters away from the Vikram lander and communicates with Vikram and the Earth via radio signals. The small rover faces many challenges and is considered a technical masterpiece. A vehicle must cope with low gravity, deep dust, uneven terrain, and extreme temperatures on the moon. Gravity on the moon is only about one slash six that of Earth. This means that the rover weighs much less on the moon than it does on Earth. The vehicle has far less grip and stability and can easily make small jumps. Thanks to a special suspension, it nevertheless remains safely on the ground and comes back up gently after bounces. Subsurfaces and in all regions of the South Pole, the lunar surface is very rough and rocky, with many craters, hills, and valleys. This makes it difficult for the rover to always find a smooth and flat path to move. Pagan's intelligent navigation system uses sensors, cameras, and algorithms to map the terrain while planning the best route. Even obstacles are easily detected by the small vehicle, and it simply drives around them. The fine and sharp-edged dust particles of the moon were a challenge for the designers. All lunar rovers have to cope with this peculiarity. For one thing, the wheels and navigation must be able to withstand the dust, and for another, the solar cells must be so well coated that dust does not adhere and result in a layer that blocks sunlight. Pagan's dust protection system and self-powered brushes, a blower, and even a heater equip the little rover for every conceivable problem. This allows the rover to independently clean all of its instruments of dust buildup, keeping itself in tip-top shape at all times. The temperature differences on the moon are extreme. At night or in the polar night, they can be as low as minus 56 degrees Celsius, and during the day they rise regionally to as high as plus 121 degrees Celsius. This can cause thermal stress and damage to the rover's instruments. To overcome even this challenge, the rover has a thermal control system that uses insulation, radiators, and heaters to regulate its temperature. At first glance, the rover looks simple, but in fact, this small vehicle is a feat of engineering and the pride of India's space agency. We can look forward to seeing what this brave and curious machine will discover on the moon. Successful analysis of lunar rocks. Can you imagine that the moon is a treasure trove full of undiscovered riches? China recently proved just that with its Chang-5 mission. In a unique move, the rover sent rock samples back to Earth, and what researchers found inside was surprising. In addition to large amounts of water encased in the finest glass One beads, component of this mineral entirely could revolutionize mineral. our world and all of space travel. Helium-3, an isotope that can enable nuclear fusion and provide us with clean electricity. 
Chandrayaan-3 also has the job of taking rock samples and sending them back to Earth. Here we see a diagram of the chemical composition of a sample of lunar rock analyzed by the Pragian rover's laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy LIBS, instrument. It shows a bar graph of the elements present in the sample with their relative and percent abundance. LIBS is used to determine the chemical composition of lunar rock samples. To do this, LIBS uses intense laser pulses to heat rock into an extremely hot plasma that emits light. The instrument picks up the light and analyzes its wavelengths to identify elements present in the sample among other things. Chandrayaan-3 will determine whether the south polar region differs in rock composition and minerals from other regions on the moon. The composition of the moon's rocks tells scientists much about the moon's origin and evolution. Astrogeologists gain extensive knowledge about precise geological processes and activities from the samples. Rocks in the south polar region contain high amounts of sulfur. Sulfur is part of many biological molecules, such as amino acids and proteins. In the cosmos, it's considered a biomarker, although where sulfur occurs, life does not necessarily exist. Sulfur also occurs wherever there is volcanism or magma and lava. It can also be an indicator of meteorite impacts, as some types of meteorites contain sulfur. The presence of sulfur and other elements in lunar rocks in the South Pole region indicate that this region was active and possibly alive with volcanism in the past. These new findings are exciting and fascinating. Chandrayaan-3 may once again completely change our understanding of the moon and its history. The findings may also open new possibilities for future exploration and colonization of the moon. All of the elements available on the moon have a role to play and are being watched with excitement. Scientists around the world are currently working on systems that will allow lunar colonists to obtain water, oxygen, and fuels, even on the moon. Mapping Lunar Surface Temperature Something that most people completely overlook about the moon is its extreme climate. The moon has virtually no protective layer. Sunlight burns on the surface during the day, and at night the Earth's satellite is bitterly cold. Depending on the region, the temperatures of the lunar surface vary greatly, and it's an exciting thing for researchers to create a map of the moon that deals only with temperatures and climate zones. Temperature measurements are the business of the Vikram lander. Using its Chia case instrument, the lander will create a fine temperature profile of the lunar topsoil around the pole. Over the course of the mission, the long-term instrument will be the first to fully record the thermal behavior of the lunar surface. Chase is even capable of creating a thermal map of the lunar subsurface. The results of its first measurement showed that the temperature of the lunar surface and subsurface in the South Pole region varies from minus 156 degrees Celsius at night to plus 121 degrees Celsius during the day. This confirms that the South Pole region is one of the coldest and hottest places on the moon and that it's a major challenge to the success of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. A day on the moon lasts 14 Earth days. Thus, Vikram and Pragyan work for 14 days at a time, and then they enter a rest mode during the cold 14-day lunar night. The mission has just begun and is expected to provide at least one year of new data from the moon. Is the universe a true time mystery that has just been disenchanted? Join us for a groundbreaking study that claims our cosmic existence has not 13.8, but an incredible 27 billion years on the ticking clock. This revelation, accompanied by compelling evidence, forces us to rethink everything we have known about the universe. What does this exciting discovery mean for our understanding of space and time, and will the cornerstones of the Big Bang Theory hold up under the scientific pressure? In this fascinating foray into the far reaches of astrophysics, we will not only reveal why the universe may Some actually be much older, guessed as much a century also. ago, the true age of the universe, no one in the world of astrophysics and cosmology knew the name Rendra Gupta until now that is about to change. And the man who teaches as a professor of theoretical physics and cosmology at the University of Ottawa may soon go down in history. Gupta is the only one currently providing two coherent explanations of how there can be dozens of galaxies deemed impossible at the edge of the known universe. His explicatory approach is simple and is based on two theories that were already known 100 years ago, but nobody took them seriously at that time. If Gupta's proposal is correct, we will have to get used to a completely new value for the age of the universe. 
27 billion years with an uncertainty of about 40 billion years. Gupta has good reasons to claim this and he provides evidence. What would be the significance of this discovery for all those scientists who, until now, believed in the Big Bang and the age of the universe is estimated at 13.8 billion years? Well, if Gupta's study is correct and our universe is at least 27 billion years old, this would have enormous implications for our perspective and view of the cosmos. It would mean that dozens of previous theories and models would be brought down. Some would be wrong, others could be revised and updated. This need not just mean more work for scientists. These innovations can be a chance to now solve all the fundamental questions and mysteries about the origin and fate of the universe that have remained unanswered until now. For example, one of the unsolved questions in cosmology has been, what was before the Big Bang? If the Big Bang was the beginning of time and space, it makes no sense to ask what was before it. But if the Big Bang was not the beginning, but only a transition from one universe to others or only a beginning of many, then we need to know more about it. Possibly there was another universe before ours, or our universe originated in a much larger structure that is far older and resembles a multiverse with many parallel universes. Galaxies older than the universe, what would you say if there are stars and galaxies in the cosmos, which are older than the cosmos itself? This sounds illogical and it is, but these observations are real. At first, it was only one star, Methuselah, that showed an age beyond 13.8 billion years. Researchers were still calculating and pondering a measurement error when the next shocks came in July 2023. The James Webb Space Telescope observed dozens of galaxies so old they couldn't actually exist. The galaxies existed 200 or 300 million years after the supposed Big Bang and have such a high degree of order and luminosity that they must have been formed at times when the universe was just freshly born. Normally, galaxies need billions of years to develop. If scientists calculate the development time of these galaxies back, they appear older than the universe itself. Possibilities that these galaxies were something like turbo developers are also discussed, but these explanations are not really to be taken seriously. James Webb's discoveries speak much more for the fact that the universe is much older or that the Big Bang never existed. Rangner Ad Gupta presents his solution. Since the summer of 2022, there has been excitement among scientists. Hardly anyone likes the new world view, and researchers have been too hung up on previous theories and believe them. Now all of this could be incorrect and researchers prepare for sleepless nights. Unfortunately, at present, not all astronomers and cosmologists share the opinion that the new discoveries are a change. They hold on to old explanations, but innovations are essential. When Rangder Gupta saw the observations of James Webb, he was not one of those who said impossible. He had an idea, and soon after, a coherent explanation at hand. Gautra recalled a theory from the 1920s created by a Swiss scientist named Fritz Zwicky. Zwicky researched the red shift of galaxies and came light traveling through space shifts from white to red, causing the oldest galaxies to appear reddish, while the nearest stars glow white or blue-white. Edwin Hubble interpreted this red shift as evidence of galaxies moving away from us leading to the development of the Hubble constant and the concept of the universe's expansion. However, doubts remain about the universe's expansion, which is fundamental to the Big Bang theory. On the other hand, Fritz Zwicky proposed the tired light theory, suggesting that light turns red due to energy loss over its long journey. This theory contradicts the standard model of cosmology, but Rendra Gupta from the University of Ottawa has found a solution. Gupta combines this idea with Paul Dirac's hypothesis of variable constants, suggesting that certain constants describing model forces challenges and the standard mass cosmological chamber. constant and proposes a new term based on variable constants, which significantly affects the estimated age of the universe. According to these calculations, an age of 27 to 40 billion years seems likely. However, while this solution appears promising, it introduces new problems causing scientists to refrain from celebrating. If the behavior of particles changes so dramatically over time that it leads to computational errors, we have a poor chance of ever understanding the young universe. Scientists are already having trouble understanding and describing the behavior of all particles in the present. If particles change their behavior over time, 
it becomes almost impossible to describe the young universe or put it into mathematical formulas. Here we come to an interesting point and to one of the most famous scientists of antiquity, Hermes Trismagisto. Hermes Trismagisto described the nature of the universe in the second century BC in a collection of verses known as Hermetica. In it, the universal genius describes the geometry and blueprint of the cosmos with these formulas, among others. As above, so below, that which is within is like that which is without, and what is in the large is also to be found in the small. In quantum and particle physics, researchers reached a limit beyond which the behavior of particles becomes so unpredictable that they can no longer be measured. When atoms are broken down into smaller and smaller building blocks, electrons, neutrons, protons, quanta, quarks, and more, some of these particles are graspable and determinable. However, at the threshold that German physicist Werner Heisenberg called fuzziness, the measurement results become blurred and the particles elude measurement and cannot be described. If Paul Dirac was right, the same thing happens in the world of large phenomena. Above a certain threshold, the behavior of particles changes, making them currently no longer properly detectable or describable from our point of view. If this is true, then we have now encountered the fuzziness in the cosmos, and the old prophecy of Hermes Trismegisto of in the small as in the large is confirmed in a fascinating way, thousands of years later. The end of astrophysics. Do we have to ask ourselves at this point whether this circumstance would mean the end of astrophysics? That is certainly not the case. Surely, humans will penetrate deeper into the cosmos of the smallest particles and will develop new methods to overcome the threshold of the fuzziness. Scientists of all eras have had to admit new dimensions and ideas and improve their techniques to learn more and more about this world and the cosmos. The current crisis in astronomy and cosmology is therefore nothing unusual. Although we know fantastic pictures of more than 93 billion light years of the universe and have traced and deciphered many phenomena, the universe still provides material for millennia of research. To be able to explain the beginning of the universe is a wish of mankind. The beginning of creation can also give us clues to the meaning and purpose of our own existence. If it turns out to be true that our universe is subject to a constant cycle of emergence, growth, and decay, these ideas can also be transferable to other areas. Ancient peoples, such as the Vedas, claimed thousands of years ago that we live in a multiverse and are mortal beings who are born, live, pass away, and are born again. What if a giant asteroid suddenly came at us and all our defense strategies failed? Could we avert a disaster of biblical proportions or would we be helpless against the cosmic forces? These pressing questions prompted NASA to send a specially designed probe directly into the path of an asteroid, but the results were not what they expected. What unforeseen twists and turns were there, and what does this mean for our safety? The RT, Double Asteroid Redirection Test. For years, engineers and scientists built a probe that knew only one goal, its certain destruction. It was clear from the beginning that NASA's DART would have a short lifespan, launched only to test a new method of planetary defense. The spacecraft was designed to be a one-stop shop. The target of the DART spacecraft was a near-Earth object called Doros. The plan was that if successful, Doros' orbit would be slightly slower by the probe's impact and its orbit permanently altered. The trick in this type of planetary defense is not so much building the probe and slamming it into the asteroid. The trick is to accurately determine the impact intensity so that the asteroid is why displaced is so only important? enough to put it... And why can't we just destroy asteroids? Often when people think of asteroid defense, they are haunted by the idea that these chunks of rock could simply be blown up. After all, putting an explosive charge on an asteroid or placing it inside the asteroid's core, as in Armageddon, would be theoretically possible. But this approach probably only works in the movies. The problem with this is the amount of debris that would be created after the blast. Dozens or hundreds of fragments of an asteroid would then be directed on chaotic paths and possibly become a new threat to Earth. In an extreme emergency, we humans might resort to such a measure, but research has shown that it makes much more sense to push asteroids out of collision orbit or to tell them away, depending on the location and timing of the detection of the threat from space. 
A fairly small amount of effort can be enough to push an asteroid into a safe orbit. However, if the maneuver goes wrong and the asteroid is pushed too little or too far, it can remain a hazard. This is exactly why NASA tested the procedure on Doros, an asteroid far enough away to not become a hazard. No matter the outcome of the test, the danger from space, Doros was located about 10.6 million km away in 20,122 and is part of a binary asteroid. The chunk, which is only 160 meters in size, orbits the asteroid Dimas, which is much larger at 780 meters. Whether Doros will ever be on a collision course with Earth is not foreseeable at this time. Known asteroids behave only partly predictably. They can remain quiet for years, bound to certain orbits, and then suddenly they are magically attracted by the sun. Not everything about these processes has been researched yet. We do not know exactly which mechanisms in the solar system trigger the asteroid migrations. Currently, there are hundreds of thousands of objects such as asteroids and comets bound in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. Far more objects are found at the outermost edge of the solar system in the Kuiper belt behind Neptune and Pluto. There are also hundreds of thousands of rocks from the size of snowballs up to several kilometers large, asteroids, and the Oort cloud, which lies already outside of the heliosphere. There are also numerous asteroids, comets, and rocks, which can shear off and migrate towards the sun. If asteroids or comets start their flight towards the sun, they still need many years until they reach the interior of the solar system, depending on their place of origin. Normally, we should notice such a body soon on Earth. Thousands of astronomers look into the night sky. Many comets are discovered by amateur astronomers, and asteroids are constantly watched by some of the best telescopes on Earth. Still, surprises happen too. There were always smaller impacts of asteroids, which nobody foresaw, and also the object. Oumuamua was noticed only when it had already passed the Earth at some thousand kin distance. Mission Planetary Defense we have a good chance that a large asteroid or comet, like the Chicxulub asteroid, which probably wiped out almost all land dinosaurs about 65 million years ago, would be sighted years before it hit. The asteroid was probably about 11 kilometers in diameter and scientists are optimistic that a chunk of that size would catch the telescope's eye today, long before impact. For example, Oumuamua, which cheated its way past Earth, was only one kilometer long, flat, or cigar-shaped, and also very dark, which is why no one noticed it at first. Whether Oumuamua was an asteroid or something else is still not known. About 60% of the currently known near-Earth objects are larger than 140 meters. This size is already enough to cause regional destruction on Earth. On February 15, 2013, a small asteroid fell over Russia exploding while still in the air due to the forces of entering the Earth's atmosphere. Nevertheless, the blast shattered numerous windows, jumbled the books in the library, and injured hundreds of people, so we have to take the threat seriously. DAR to reach its goal on September 26, 2022. Ten months after its launch, the DAR mission completed its task. It struck Didymos, initially kicking up a lot of dust and smaller pieces of rock. The asteroid was hidden behind a dense dust cloud for several days after the impact, and scientists had to wait until the asteroid's new position could be determined. We can already reveal that the asteroid was successfully redirected to another orbit. But does this also mean that DART was a success? Well, this is true, but also somehow not. NASA could proudly announce that Didymos was moved significantly, but the movement was almost a bit too much. The asteroid had an orbital period of 11.9 hours at the start of the experiment Together, and is staying about two one asteroids orbit the sun every 2.1 Earth years. After the impact of the DART spacecraft, Didymos's orbital period changed by a full 32 minutes, from 11 hours and 55 minutes to 11 hours and 23 minutes. Since DART was the first mission of its kind, it was deemed a complete success despite minor inaccuracies. Now scientists can make much more accurate calculations based on thousands of measurements. The intensity of the impact will then be better measured when the test is repeated, and we will see whether the asteroid that is next to be deflected from its orbit by humans will then end up exactly where it's supposed to be. 
It will certainly only be a matter of time and experience before our technologies will be able to do this. The DAR to mission, a collaborative effort between NASA, the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, and partners from Italy, Japan, and ESA, successfully impacted the asteroid Didymos on September 26, 2022. The spacecraft was controlled automatically and approached the asteroid at a speed of 22,000 kilometers slash, capturing images just seconds before impact. The impact released 19 G of energy, creating a 150 meters wide crater on the 160 meters wide asteroid. The mission was observed using optical telescopes, with the Italian LICIQ capturing images before and after impact. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope also observed debris from the impact for 285 hours. Despite its relatively modest size and technology, the DART mission demonstrated effective international collaboration and marked a significant step forward in planetary defense against asteroids. In October 2024, the European Space Agency will send the Hera probe into space. It will reach Deimos and Dioros after 10 months of travel and use cameras, a spectrometer, and an altimeter to document the size, shape, and composition of the crater left by the DRT impact. Carried by two nano-satellites named Milani and Juventus, the Hera mission will study the internal and subsurface structures of Dioros and further complete our picture and knowledge of asteroids. What did the oldest and most distant galaxies in the universe look like? What would happen if a telescope were so powerful that it could push the boundaries of what we know about the early universe? The Hubble telescope has already given us a breathtaking view of deep space, but the James Webb telescope promises to take us even further back in time. Why does this latest glimpse into the cosmos change everything scientists have previously assumed? How did it all begin? Throughout human history, thousands of scientists, philosophers, and religious people have pondered the beginning of time and the origins of creation. Many thousands of years ago, People made up stories about a god who said there would be light. Later, scientists tried to find out the truth and to check if there was a shred of truth in the old creation myths. The Big Bang Theory originated about 100 years ago and provided for the first time coherent approaches which united all up to this time known sizes of cosmology, astronomy, and physics. The idea was a starting point in a singularity, then a bang, and a boiling hot primeval soup spread within fractions of a second in a space in which before very probably nothing existed. For a long time, nobody doubted this theory. It seemed to be too coherent. But then the James Webb Space Telescope showed something on its first images that should not exist at all according to the theory of the Big Bang. HD1 is a galaxy estimated to be 13.5 billion light years away. That's an unbelievable 100 million light years further than the next galaxy, Gyan's 11. HD1 existed 300 million years after the assumed Big Bang. With this discovery came some fundamental new questions. How could there have already been fixed galaxies of great luminosity and order in the still so young universe? And is the discovery real at all? The shape, brightness, and stellar richness of this old galaxy are so outstanding that the discovery can never be a galaxy conforming to the laws and calculations of the Big Bang. Scientists were shocked. Some were enthusiastic, and others vehemently rejected the discovery until today and suspect some kind of mistake in the photo. The oldest sources of light in the cosmos ever seen by a human being show up only as diffuse red collections of light. A layman can't see much here, but the telescope's fine measurement sensors and thousands of computer algorithms can draw so much information from this light that the human eye alone could never do. When studying thousands of galaxies in an image like this, it's common to first extract the photometry for each source with each available filter. Then, also using photometry, the red shift of each light source is determined. Observed quantities such once as known can help determine the distance in the space-time continuum. Astronomers use this effect to calculate the age and distance of a galaxy. Photometric redshift is easy to determine but less accurate compared to spectroscopic redshift, which requires high-quality light spectrum and more observing time per galaxy. The accuracy of the discovery of the oldest galaxy is still a topic of debate among scholars and cosmologists. According to widely accepted cosmological models, the universe began 13.8 billion years ago 
with the Big Bang, and from there, the cosmic dark ages prevailed. The formation of the first atoms, molecules, and the birth of stars occurred gradually over millions of years. However, the discovery of highly organized and starry galaxies just 300 million years after the Big Bang challenges previous assumptions about the early universe. The James Webb Telescope, equipped with highly sensitive infrared technology, has the potential to provide unprecedented insights into the cosmic dawn. Although not originally discovered by the James Webb Telescope, the distant and oldest galaxy, HD1, has sparked controversy and skepticism within the scientific community. The telescope's mission aims to clarify the origins of the cosmos and shed light on such groundbreaking discoveries. James Webb's image revealed a multitude of galaxies, possibly older than HD1, prompting intense scrutiny and research among astronomers. Telescopes, with their remarkable ability to capture light that has traveled through space for billions of years, provide a window into the past. By observing distant objects, astronomers gain insights into the universe's early stages, such as HD1 300 million years after the Big Bang. International teams of astronomers have dedicated 1,200 hours with various telescopes, including the Subaru Vista UK Infrared Atacama Large Millimeter Array and the Spitzer Space Telescope to confirm the true distance of these ancient galaxies. Before HD1, TNZ11 held the record as the most distant galaxy, existing 400 million years after the Big Bang. However, HD1 surpassed it, shining brightly in ultraviolet light and suggesting a burst of star formation. This discovery challenges previous theories about ancient stars and complex galaxies. Furthermore, James Webb's subsequent discoveries of even older galaxies, potentially 10 times the stars as previously thought, raise questions about the formation and energy output of these ancient galaxies. New theories propose the existence of supermassive black holes or unusual first stars in these ancient galaxies. Researchers may have to confront the possibility that previous theories about the universe's origins were incorrect, as the Big Bang itself has been unproven. Predictions about the universe have been confirmed through calculations, but this method's reliability may not be absolute. It's plausible that neither HD1 nor the other ancient galaxies discovered by James Webb are the oldest and new discoveries may prompt a re-evaluation of existing theories. In another context, claims have emerged about alien activity near Saturn. According to these claims, aliens are reportedly conducting mining operations within Saturn's rings, where valuable minerals and resources are found. These assertions are attributed to Robert Bob Dean, a former U.S. Army Command Sergeant Major and ufologist who has claimed to possess evidence of these activities. Additionally, Dean has vocalized controversial opinions about extraterrestrial intelligence and NASA's role in revealing information about alien contact, which has been a topic of scrutiny and speculation. Pilots frequently report encounters with unidentified flying objects, UFOs, showcasing the diversity of spacecraft sightings. Additionally, Bob Dean, a former NATO officer, has claimed to possess and share significant photos of strange flying objects such as the one captured during the Apollo 12 mission by astronaut Alan Bean. Although Dean's work and insights into extraterrestrial interactions were extensive, they have not been publicly proven. Moreover, Dean asserted the existence of over a hundred different extraterrestrial organizations, with some resembling humans and potentially holding influential positions. He also indicated the interaction of these beings with dimensions beyond our own. Furthermore, Dean's claims draw parallels to scientific theories about the possibility of multiple dimensions, which have historically sparked controversy and skepticism, similar to the experiences of scientist Burkert Heen. Additionally, Dean acquired photographs from Dr. Norman Bergren, a NASA scientist involved in the Voyager missions and Saturn exploration, which allegedly include a large unidentified flying object. These circumstances highlight the ongoing debate about extraterrestrial presence and interactions with humanity, amid potential censorship and secrecy Dr. by organizations on Saturn's like rings NASA. includes claims that suggest the rings are influenced by giant electromagnetic vehicles operated by intelligent beings. These beings are believed to engage in mining or mineral extraction within the rings, with traces of thrusters seen in images. It is further suggested that similar ships may orbit other planets in the solar system, 
forming the familiar rings through their activities. These entities, which may operate on other dimensions, are speculated to be inhabitants of Saturn and possibly other seemingly inert planets in the solar system. Moreover, the text also mentions a series of mysterious sightings, including a long spaceship near the moon, a cigar-shaped object flying by as observed by astronaut Neil Armstrong, and a disc-shaped object near the moon's surface. Additionally, Bob Dean, who commented on these images and shared his knowledge from years of service, also commented on the origin of the human race, suggesting it to be a hybrid race created by genetic modification from an extraterrestrial species approximately 200,000 years ago. While Dean's lectures were met with skepticism, he remained undeterred and continued to share his insights until his passing in 2018. Furthermore, the age of the universe has been called into question with the discovery by the James Webb Space Telescope of a star whose age challenges previous understandings of the cosmos. This finding suggests the potential for the universe to be significantly older than previously believed, potentially as much as 26.7 billion years or even older. This groundbreaking discovery prompts a reevaluation of our understanding of the universe's age and the new possibilities that such an extended time frame could entail. A study by Professor Rajendra Gupta of the University of Ottawa has proposed a groundbreaking solution to the mystery of the impossible galaxies. The discovery of six exceptionally old and unique galaxies by the James Webb Telescope challenges previous notions of the universe's age, estimated using the Landis CDM concordance model to be around 13.8 billion years old. These galaxies, despite existing only 300 million years after the Big Bang, exhibit characteristics typical of much older galaxies, posing a significant challenge to the prevailing understanding of cosmic evolution. Gupta's research suggests that the discrepancy between the observed age of these galaxies and the age estimated from redshift measurements may be related to the tired light theory proposed by Fritz Wicke in 1929. This theory posits that the redshift observed in distant objects may not solely indicate their distance from us, but could also be influenced by light losing energy over its cosmic journey. If proven true, this would necessitate a comprehensive reassessment or understanding of the early universe, including the distance and age of galaxies and stars, as well as the overall expansion of the universe. Additionally, Gupta has proposed a new hypothesis based on the work of physicist Paul Dra, suggesting that fundamental physical rules, known as coupling constants, may have evolved over time. This potential evolution of fundamental physical constants could have far-reaching implications for our understanding of light and matter in the universe. In the early universe, the behavior of light and matter significantly deviated from present observations, challenging our ability to identify the oldest cosmic objects and understand universe formation. This discrepancy raises new questions and challenges, requiring time and unbiased observation to develop new guidelines for early astronomy. The James Webb Telescope's unprecedented findings of ancient and highly evolved galaxies undermine previous theories, presenting a compelling need for a revised understanding of cosmic evolution. Additionally, Drax's proposed evolving coupling constants suggest a reevaluation of cosmological principles, indicating a potentially much older universe spanning an estimated age of around 26.7 billion years. The telescope's advanced light filtering technologies offer prospects for further insights into early galaxy formation, potentially explaining their advanced characteristics. Furthermore, recent observations have revealed a multitude of ancient and atypical galaxies, further challenging traditional cosmological perceptions and prompting a re-examination of the universe's early evolution. The James Webb Telescope's groundbreaking discoveries including galaxies that existed only 200 million years after the supposed Big Bang, contradict conventional cosmological models, which predicted the presence of only basic star structures at that time. These unexpected findings fuel the need for a significant reassessment of our understanding of the, the universe's image origins captured by the James Webb perfect. Telescope's Mirai instrument reveals vivid spiral galaxies in the foreground and much older galaxies in the distance, emitting unprecedented levels of energy. These distant galaxies, observed 200 to 500 million years after the Big Bang, pose a fundamental question. How did they emit such exceptional energy? Scientists have proposed two potential explanations, 
Intense energy sources such as black holes or massive stars surpassing the brightest hypergent stars known today. Advanced computer simulations aimed to reconstruct the universe's evolution over billions of years have struggled to rationalize this extreme energy emission. Rajendra Gupta's model of changing constants in early space offers a coherent explanation for this phenomenon and is currently undergoing rigorous testing. This hypothesis may profoundly alter our understanding of the universe's origin story, presenting the potential for a paradigm shift in cosmology. Furthermore, a significant lunar discovery by Chinese space exploration, the Chang-5 mission, unveiled a rare crystal deep within the moon's basalt particles. This crystal, named Chang-5 I, has the potential to revolutionize Earth's energy future and is entirely distinct from any known material on Earth. This groundbreaking find has sparked immense interest in lunar mining and promises to change our understanding of lunar resources. Helium-3, a rare and extraordinary element scarcely found on Earth, has the potential to revolutionize global energy production through nuclear fusion. China's lunar missions, primarily the CHAIN program, have revealed significant discoveries, as well as their technological advancements in space exploration positioning them as key players in lunar exploration. China's long history of space exploration dates back to ancient innovations in rocketry, and its independent space program began in the late 1950s. The nation gradually expanded its capabilities, culminating in successful lunar missions, including the discovery of a unique lunar crystal containing helium-3, a potential game-changer in clean and sustainable energy production through nuclear fusion. Through their lunar endeavors, China has recognized the strategic significance of the moon as a resource, particularly regarding helium-3 extraction. By establishing a lead in lunar exploration and resource extraction, China has positioned itself as a global leader in securing the potential of helium-3 for clean and efficient energy production, marking a significant step towards addressing the urgent global crisis of climate change. Helium-3 presents an opportunity for countries to secure energy independence and influence in the global energy market. However, the technological hurdles of utilizing helium-3 for nuclear fusion, including the cost-effective transport of helium-3 to Earth, remain unresolved. While a cargo hold full of helium-3 can potentially power the entire United States for a year, the challenges of establishing supply chains, mining operations on the moon, and maintaining economical rocket launches must be addressed. Additionally, the mining of helium-3 and its potential applications could drive a new era of space travel and exploration. Fusion propulsion systems utilizing helium-3 could enable longer missions at lower cost and could facilitate travel to distant planets and star systems. Moreover, lunar regolith, long considered unremarkable, has proven to be a valuable resource with potential for sustaining human life on the moon and providing resources for rocket propellants. Furthermore, the discovery of water enclosed in glass beads within lunar rock samples presents the possibility of a reliable water source for future lunar settlements and industrial facilities. This, coupled with the presence of water ice in permanently shadowed craters, indicates the moon's potential to support sustained human presence and industrial activities. The exploration of Titan, Saturn's largest moon, has revealed similarities to Earth and the potential for Earth-like conditions and the discovery of life. However, the exact formation of moons remains a topic of debate among astronomers, with terrestrial moons being prime candidates for the discovery of life due to their similarities to Earth. The Cassini mission has contributed to revealing the mysteries of Titan. Each celestial body in the solar system holds its unique secrets, from the potential of sustainable energy production using helium-3 to the prospect of sustaining human life on the moon and the exploration of moon titan all with profound implications for the future of space the exploration Huygens historic and landing on titan saturn's largest moon marked the first and only time a probe has landed in the outer solar system despite hazy and unclear conditions the probe's descent revealed a landscape with mountains hills and a network of drainage channels as well as lakes and seas filled with liquid methane rather than water. Unfortunately, the probe experienced minor communication issues, resulting in fewer images being transmitted than planned. 
While the disappointment in not finding signs of life on Titan was palpable, the detailed images provided valuable insights into the moon's landscape, revealing a surface with scattered pebbles, dried up lake or riverbed features, and rock hard frozen water. Despite the absence of immediate signs of life, some scientists still hold hope for the potential existence of simple life forms on Titan, especially given the demonstrated ability of microbes to thrive on methane. To further explore Titan, NASA's upcoming mission, Dragonfly, aims to launch a drone for exploration in 2027, with initial flights planned for 2034. The mission seeks to delve deeper into Titan's mysteries, understanding that initial observations might not provide conclusive evidence of life. Similarly, it's important to consider that the absence of immediate signs of life in certain environments, such as the desert or ocean, does not discount the possibility of life existing elsewhere within the same location. The Dragonfly mission will perform exploration flights over Titan's surface, similar to Mars Ingenuity helicopter, representing a shift towards more efficient exploration of moons and planets using drones and helicopters. Equipped with various cameras and scientific instruments, Dragonfly aims to search for evidence of complex chemistry and potential signs of past or present life on Titan. Looking ahead, a day on Titan is described as otherworldly, with a subdued sun, a hazy sky, and extremely cold temperatures, making it necessary for humans to wear thick protective spacesuits. Moreover, the prolonged day-night cycle and the quiet, frigid environment add to the alien nature of the moon. Despite the challenges, there is speculation about human exploration and temporary habitation on Titan in the distant future. Additionally, while Titan hasn't shown evidence of life, other moons in the solar system present promising prospects. For instance, beneath Europa's icy surface lies a vast ocean, while Enceladus exhibits geyser activity, potentially containing evidence of microbial life. Furthermore, Ganymede and Triton also have characteristics that raise the possibility of harboring oceans and life, prompting the launch of various future missions to these moons for further exploration. The scientific community holds differing views on the timing and likelihood of discovering definitive evidence of extraterrestrial life, with some hoping for breakthroughs in the coming decades. The vastness and complexity of the universe make the search for life challenging, especially when considering Titan and other moons as potential targets for exploration. The prospects of finding life beyond Earth, even in the form of bacteria, would be significant and awe-inspiring regardless of whether the environments resemble fictional worlds like the Avatar moon. Following the passing of astronaut Neil Armstrong, unsettling revelations about his medical treatment and personal mementos came to light, causing shock and controversy. Reports uncovered details of his untimely death after routine heart surgery, leading to scrutiny of the healthcare system's treatment of national heroes. Additionally, the discovery of a box containing historical artifacts related to the Apollo 11 mission, preserved by Armstrong until his death, added further intrigue to his legacy. These disclosures prompted widespread discussion and introspection. NASA celebrated Armstrong as a humble hero and revealed details about his personal items, offering insights into his pride as the first man on the moon. The moon landing has been the subject of conspiracy theories, questioning its authenticity and suggesting a potential backup plan by NASA in case the original mission failed dramatically. Despite ongoing skepticism, experts have authenticated the moon landing footage. Armstrong consistently dismissed such rumors, and the discovery of his personal keepsakes may serve as further evidence of his lunar voyage.